Hey everybody, uh, just thought I'd share something that I thought was really cool. This is uh, something I was having a little fun with the other day. So what we have here is we have a piece of plastic uh, plexiglass and in front and back of it we have some polarizing film and the polarizing film are at uh, 90 degrees to each other so the light coming in gets cancelled out by the uh, or gets oriented by the first filter and then since the second filter or second film is at 90 degrees all of that gets cancelled out. And plastics, or transparent plastics, uh, exhibit a really neat property called birefringence. And what that means is that as you stretch the plastic, the index of refraction changes based on how much it gets stretched. Uh, so if you think of putting your arm underwater and how there's a little like discontinuity and your arm appears to move, uh, that is part of um, the index of refraction on water. So with plastics, the index continuously changes as the um, amount we stretch the plastic changes. And so it can lead to these really neat patterns. And uh, what people actually used to do uh, way back before all sorts of um, computational methods like finite element existed, is they would actually make things out of plastic and use polarizing film in order to see, well, you know, how hard am I stretching something when I have a really funny shape because the computation computational methods just didn't exist at the time. So what we're going to do is we're going to take a look at a couple different plastic shapes and see as we stretch them what kind of color patterns develop and I just think they're pretty cool. And so because we're using uh, the change in light to determine the stress in a material as we stretch it, uh, this, is called, this technique is called photoelastic stress analysis and it's just something that oh, I always think the color patterns look cool. It's like color patterns in finite element people see them like, oh, oh that's so pretty and the same thing is true with actual photoelastic measurements so what we have here is we just have a piece of plastic with a rounded notch and in the engineering world we like rounded notches as opposed to really sharp notches because the smoother you can make a transition uh, the better off you are and the less of a what we call a stress concentration you have so let's go ahead and stretch that piece of plastic so we're gonna wait for the machine it has to engage a little bit there's some pins up top and here we go so you can see these uh, color patterns developing in the middle and the number of color changes or fringes is indicating how much stress there is so right at kind of the roots of those notches and they're uh, not expertly machined but at the roots of those notches that's where the, the highest stress is going to be and so eventually we just hit a point uh, actually the the bearing holes gave out so uh, we couldn't really keep stretching the material but you can see how the uh, fringes kind of radiate out from those uh, notch root, or root notches and then uh, I'll go ahead and unload the machine in a second and you'll see that those fringes go back in towards the center here we go As the load keeps dropping, the stress drops, and so we have fewer and fewer fringes. And eventually we, we return back to the material as it was. With uh, a little bit of what we call plastic deformation. So that's a, a permanent change in shape, and you can see there's some residual color around those uh, not root, notch roots. And that's due to, one, machining them in, and two, uh, just the deformation that we induced by stretching the material. So now we're going to go from a nice rounded notch, which is preferable, to a much sharper notch. And the way I put this in was I just used a bandsaw blade and uh, put those two notches in. So we'll go ahead and stretch this piece of plastic. And uh, these notches are much, you know, uh, much tighter, and so the, the stress concentration is much more severe comparatively. And we'll just uh, wait for the machine to kick on. And here we go. And so we can see there's a, quite a number of fringes coming from both of those uh, notch roots. And you know, this is the, the stress concentration. There are a couple of things from an engineering perspective that uh, could be better you know the notches should be even with each other and you should be pulling perfectly straight 
but uh, this was just for fun, so I wasn't too worried about, oh, how perfectly is everything aligned, but for design purposes, and all, all sorts of handbooks have cataloged this information. Um, ideally, you want everything to be perfectly straight and perfectly even. In the engineering world, we love symmetry. I know it doesn't necessarily work for the art world, but uh, that's what we like. And as we uh, drop the load off, you can see all those fringes go back towards the um, the notch roots, and then we have some residual uh, plastic deformation. So when we have a sharp notch, uh, sometimes we don't always have enough space to uh, create a nice gentle transition. So one of the solutions is actually to add more notches, and effectively that does the same thing as um, adding a nice rounded section as opposed to sharp notches. And uh, that's one way of reducing your stress concentration. And again, this is something you can find in all sorts of handbooks. So we're going to go ahead and stretch this sample where you can see that there's the sharp notches in the middle, but then there are more shallow notches outside. And what that's doing is that's essentially funneling all of that stress and it's creating that gentle transition because there's no material there in those shallower notches. So it's a roundabout way of creating a rounded notch instead of um, by using multiple sharp notches instead. And uh, just peeling back the film here and you can see that, oh hey, um, it's just a piece, clear piece of plexiglass. And it's the polarizing film that lets us see all the color patterns. And the last thing we'll look at here is what's called a compact tension specimen. And it's basically a square block and it's a little bit longer on one end to have some pinholes and then has a machine notch in it and from that notch we would normally cycle the part up and down and up and down pulling on those pinholes and create what's called a fatigue pre-crack. And this is really important for evaluating an engineering property called fracture toughness. And that's a materials resistance to crack propagation. Um, but for the demonstration here we're just using a machine notch without the fatigue pre-crack but it still results in a pretty cool pattern. So here you can see it's loaded up in the machine and you can't see the notch, but you can see these sort of uh, rounded um, stri uh, color patterns. And as we start to pull on the material, it creates this kind of kidney shape. And uh, that's the proper stress concentration associated with the compact tension specimen. And you can see how there are so many different fringes. They're so tightly spaced. And the reason for that is that the stress concentration is so high at that notch root. And so we can keep pulling and pulling and eventually we get to the point kind of where, you know, there are so many fringes that it looks like it's pretty uniform. But if we let it go back down, all of a sudden our uh, stress pattern comes back and we can see that there's a residual stress pattern due to uh, how we pulled and also from the sample fabrication. And that's a little bit about uh, photoelastic stress analysis. I hope you all enjoyed this video and I'll see everybody later.